make tough decisions with confidence. Like all of us, you've probably found yourself in a season when you just didn't know God's will for your life. We want to help you recognize God's voice so you can make good decisions by hearing the Holy Spirit's voice. When it comes to making tough decisions, the first thing we need to do is ask for God's guidance. But how can we recognize His voice when He responds? The practical biblical guidance gives you how you can discern God's voice when you hear it, what it means to confidently know His will for your life. How finding His will enables you to live the most amazing life possible. Hearing the Holy Spirit's voice is God's gift. Then be thankful. What's the nature of your nature? When you really understand who we are, we can walk away from His lonesome, needless fight that so many men and women battle and rest in the who God fashions us to be. Life in Christ is a journey of exploration and discovery from beginning to end. Christ in us is the great mystery as Paul put it, and anyone who thinks they fully, fully understand this mystery doesn't get it at all. incredible stuff that just keeps getting deeper and wider. When we began life in Christ, we began to experience all sorts of new things, re regeneration, justification, sanctification, propitiation, and a whole slave of other neat sounding words that end in Asian. But all this new stuff bring up an interesting question. What about the old stuff? The question usually comes to me like this. Okay, after I get born again, do I now have two natures at the core of my being where it really matters and I half good and half bad now? Maybe you've never really thought about it. Maybe you are one of those who loves to debate this sort of thing at coffee shops. Coffee shops are required for Christian dis uh, discipleship, right? Either way, how you answer this question is huge, hugely important. It is a per perplexing question full of emotion and experiences that pull us back and forth. But here is the answer, no. Yeah, that's it. One little syllable, two little letters. But again, this is huge. If you are in Christ, you don't have two natures. You have one nature, and your nature is in Christ too. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Being born again first requires a death, a death deeper and more profound than anything we can fully fathom. Exploring that death brings fresh light to our journey of discovering life. Father, as I open your word, I anticipate that you want to teach me something, maybe something new, maybe a reminder of something I have long forgotten. I know that by your spirit you want to do a work within me. So in the day ahead, I offer myself to you and your teaching so that I can experience more of who I am in your son. Amen. How do I overcome temptation? 
Temptation can sneak up on you softly, or it can overwhelm you like a storm. But the truth is, we all face the urge to do what we know we shouldn't. Have you ever been tempted and wondered if everyone else goes through the same thing? The truth is that everyone faces temptation, but the good news is you don't have to give it to it. How do you handle temptation? Do you just give in, shrug your shoulders, or say it's just the way you are? Do you give in and blame Satan or do you rely on God and in his power resist the temptation? Every temptation that comes our way is an opportunity to go wrong, but it is also an opportunity to do right. And the scripture tells us that God will never allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. Wanted, dead, and alive. The old man has been put to death just as decisively as Christ died upon the Acharos tree. Baptists are one of the great things about being a pastor. When I would get to dunk someone and then pull them out of the water, man, it was just like the best of the best. Water baptism is an outward expression of the inner transformation of Christ and when someone makes that public expression it just invigorates me from head to toe. The word baptize means to place into or to identify with. Sometimes that means into water but sometimes it means something else. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? This is not a verse about water baptism. It says we have been placed into Christ and we have been placed into his death. This is a God mystery, but it's true. The phrase is repeated again. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Oh, what happened to the old you? You were placed into Christ Jesus, you were placed into his death on the cross, and you were also placed into the tomb with him when he was buried. It is not theological trivia. This is how it happened. This is how it had to happen in order that you too may live a resurrected life in Christ because he can devil in something sinful. This is a spiritual reality, the truth about your identity in Christ, something that only God can do and has done outside of the nature, natural relay. Father, I ask that you would give me a moment to pause right now to counter, contemplate what you say is true about my nature, that I am both dead in sin and alive in Christ. This is too deep, too profound for me. I need you to lead me into the truth so that I can be free to live according to my new nature as the Spirit leads me and empowers me. Amen.